Guys, we're out here working on a septic pump. We have a septic tank and it's going into a pump pit with this pump in it. And their sewer started backing up yesterday and come to find out this pump was not working. Now, I just came here and uh, they had a plumber come out here and he missed something really elementary when you're checking a pump to find out if it's bad. Let me show you. So there's the pump. I just pulled it out of the pit. The pit's right here. Uh, you can see the tank right over here. Uh, there's the septic tank and it runs into the pit. And there's the pipe that goes out to the drain field. Now guys, here is the outlet that it's all plugged into. We have a separate float, piggyback float. So as you can see, it's all plugged in here. You can see we have one plug that's plugged into this little angled plug, okay? So what's happening was this pump wasn't running and the plumber that came, he dug it up, which was great, but he flipped the float to make sure the float was operating, right? You're like, okay, the pump ain't working, right? Well, yeah, it's not, but watch this. So we're going to unplug the float, which is the piggyback right here. Okay, so we now have the plug that's going to the pump itself, right? Let's pump, plug it in and test the pump independently. Guys, we have a good pump. We just need a new piggyback float. So if you're working on a septic pump, sewer pump, any kind of even a sump pump that has a piggyback float, always remove the piggyback right here, which I can't do with one hand. Always remove the piggyback. This is the float here. This is just called a piggyback float because it plugs into the other one. This is your pump. Test your pump independently. I was able to totally pump this down, completely pump it down because obviously the pump worked, pull the pump out, and now we just have to replace the float. So that's about $400 saved. Now, of course, whenever you test the piggyback, also verify you have power. If you need to even plug something else in, like a drill or a fan, to make sure you have power because you don't want to replace a float and realize you don't have power. So we're going to unscrew this little bracket right here. See this Phillips? There's a nut behind it. I'm going to have to grab a pliers and hold that. But we're going to go to the store. We're going to buy us a new piggyback float separately and attach this. And uh, we're going to be golden. So this is the piggyback float removed. As you can see, it's independent. It's on its own cord and it has that double plug.